Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 7. In this tutorial we're going to further advance the C-sharp script that we had last time where we're going to randomly generate different positions for our orbs and we're also going to add in some sound effects as well. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. If you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, this is where things start getting interesting because we're getting to a point now where we're ready to really expand what we've created. We've got all the basics down and from here we're going to start randomly generating positions for our orbs and then start probably building a score system um, from the next tutorial onwards with some nice sounds, some music. It's going to be pretty cool in a couple of tutorials time. Uh, but for now we are going to first bring in an audio clip and an audio clip is basically the same as anything else it's an asset so let's go to our main asset window right click create folder and we'll have audio within this folder let's have another one called sfx just short for sound effects and i'm going to drag and drop uh, an object into here so in this folder i have something called plat active which I'm going to drag and drop into here. And you can get this asset if you go onto my website, downloads and assets, hyper casual tutorial number seven, you can download this for free. Uh, so this works the same as pretty much any other asset. It's stored down here and it can be used when we bring it into the main scene or rather the hierarchy. So in main camera, I'm now going to right click, create empty and I'm gonna have a similar sort of structure as what I have in the asset. So I'm gonna have this as audio and within there i'm going to have another one so i've right clicked and got empty game object and this one is going to be uh, sfx and once again within that sfx let's create another empty and this one is going to be platform activate so let's drag and drop this plat active sound effect onto here and it's going to be fairly loud when we play it, but we're going to play around with some of these settings. So if we press play now, we should hear it. Perfect. So now let's play around with some of the settings to reduce the volume just a little bit, because I think it's a bit loud. So let's have it as 0.3 and see how that sounds. Okay, that's a bit better. You'll notice it plays every time we press play, and that's because we have play on awake ticked. We don't really want it to play on awake, so we need to untick that. We only want it to be played whenever we call it from a script. So we have a couple of different options here. Obviously, we don't want to mute it. We don't need any of these fancy effects right now, and we don't need it looping. We only need it once. But what I am going to do is change the pitch to probably two, and that will just increase the pitch, obviously, so it will sound quite high. So I am now going to save that scene. And obviously feel free to play around with some of these sound effects, but all we really need is just a basic sound effect to play whenever we turn a platform on. So I think now we should head back into our orb generate script and start working on this one. So this is going to be interesting because we now need to modify this particular bit of code to enable ourselves to generate in those three different locations. And if you remember last time, we had this orb lock generate, and we can either generate one, two, or three, which would be left, middle, or right. So we're now going to create another variable here, but this one is going to be a float. And if you remember from the last um, tutorial, we had the integers. So the float, obviously the decimal number. So public, float and we're gonna have this as what should we call it let's have it as screen in fact this is going to all be done now we think about it it's going to be done on the x location so let's just have this as x pos short for position i think that's probably a better way of doing this so i think now instead of having this new vector three where we've got minus 1.5, we can actually change this to be x pos. So now what this is going to do is rather than set the game object as 
uh, minus 1.5 on the x-axis, it's actually going to do whatever is contained within that x pos variable. And now, if we have this number here, we can quite comfortably say that we're going to generate 1, 2, or 3. Therefore, we can make 1 equal to uh, 0 point, uh, sorry, minus 1.5. We can make 2 equals to 0. And then we can make 3 equal to positive 1.5. So before we start this coroutine, let's have an if statement again. So if, and in brackets, orb lock equals one, open curly bracket, hit return, and it will automatically indent for you for this if statement. We can say that x pos equals um, minus... 1.5f semicolon. So what we've done here is if we generate a 1 here, we're going to set that x position as minus 1.5, which means here we'll also generate minus 1.5. So we can copy that if statement, place it below, change that to a 2. So if it generates the number 2, the x position, uh, position is equal to fal uh, false, equal to 0. I guess 0 is false, really. And finally, we do one more, and orb location is 3. Then we can set the x position as 1.5, which is a positive, and save that script. So in just a couple of if statements, we've now been able to randomly generate the position of those falling orbs and actually instantiate those orbs in that position. So let's head back into Unity and make sure this works. And then we're going to add that sound effect to our catch platforms. So hopefully, pressing play now, we will see the orbs falling in different sections. There we go. So let's take a look at how this is working on the uh, global scripts. So we can see here how this is being affected. We can see these constantly changing and generating in different sections. So we can catch, 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 catch. And obviously this will work a lot better on a touch screen because that's the whole idea of this. It's going to be a bit awkward trying to do it with a mouse. But yeah, essentially that's how we want it to work. It is randomly generating those particular um, orbs in different places now. Um, I think ultimately we are going to end up changing um, the names of some of these, but it doesn't matter right now. As long as we get the basics down, we're good to go here. So how do we get that sound effect on the catch buttons? Well, to do that, we need to go to our catch function script. So let's open that up. And I think we modified this last time as well, didn't we? Because we had the if statement to basically say that we can only have one active. So we need another variable in here. So public, and instead of a game object or a bool or anything, we're gonna have this as an audio source. Obviously source spelt uh, that way, not as in, you know, brown sauce, barbecue sauce. I like barbecue sauce. Anyway, I, don't, I digress here. <laughs> Let's name this as the flat active uh, FX semicolon. So we need this to play whenever we activate a platform. So we can do this pretty much anywhere within the script. Well, within certain sections anywhere in the script. You can do it in the methods. You can do it in the coroutines. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this play as soon as we have set the active plat as true. So after that, let's say plat active fx dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. And that's all there is to it for playing a sound effect. So we can take that line of code again, place it in the next method and the next method and save that script. So obviously we're now going to have to add that sound effect to the script itself, otherwise we'll end up with an error. So all we do is drag that platform activate onto there. So we're dragging the game object that contains that sound effect. So 
drag and drop over here. And now what should happen is when we press play, we should still have those random orbs falling in random places. Cool. However, if we now press a catch button, it will play that sound effect. Cool. Awesome. So I'm happy with how that's turning out now. So I think the next logical step for us to make for the next tutorial is going to be um, we'll probably add in another sound effect when we catch an orb and that is going to be where we start now actually catching those orbs. So next tutorial I want to add in some more code which allows us to catch that orb, make it disappear and then add to the score and play a nice little sound effect on top of that. So I would like to see how you guys are doing so far. So if you uh, would like to share your work on what you've got so far, please do. I'm sure loads of people would love to see how far you are coming along with your project. So until that next tutorial, guys, where things are going to start getting fun and interesting, I will see you around. Thank you very much for watching.